Mad Lad, V-Rod, thank you.
Upwell has started construction of a prototype orbital structure in low orbit above the planet of Avakin 6. No specific details have been released regarding the purpose of the structure. However, Upwell is extending an invitation to capsuleers offering rewards for the submission of rogue drone-related materials. The drone graviton emitters can be obtained from rogue drone anomalies and signature sites within high security space. Additional drone-related materials that are required can also be collected from sentient rogue drones or possibly purchased on the regional market. The materials need to be handed in at the Upwell Construction Facility at Alvacan 6. In recognition of their contributions, capsuleers are awarded Upwell Consortium loyalty tokens. Moreover, participants stand a chance of receiving new blueprint copies for consortium tractor beams and a consortium mobile tractor unit as additional rewards for their efforts. Be warned, unscrupulous capsuleers are known to be loitering around the construction site with the intention of acquiring these rewards via less than legal means. Recent Upwell-related documents that have been acquired by capsuleers from Empire Operations Centers show that Upwell is reaching out to all of the big four empires, proposing a collaboration on mass cloning or rejuvenation of selected segments of their population. The wording of the communications is clearly tailored to each individual empire, appealing to their culture and beliefs. Capsuleers have been stringing together details provided in the documents, and it seems that Upwell is proposing some sort of rejuvenation of different population elements depending on the empire. What the purpose of this proposed mass cloning or rejuvenation project is remains hotly debated. Some believe it is capsuleer related, while others argue that it is a type of large workforce or even war clone recruitment. Perhaps it is a counter move to the recent appearance of war clones known as Vanguard, developed by the Deathless. As the Upwell Consortium continues to push the boundaries of what's possible, we are left to wonder and watch closely. What are they planning? And more importantly, what implications will this have on the near future of New Eden? This is Alton Hovery reporting for The Scope. Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothi, the voice of New Eden, and it is April 12th, YC-126, and it is the Universe Show! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome if you're new, settle in. Like the stream. How's it going, guys? Today we've got, we're going to cover the scope video and also uh, go over the second part of the Mordu Legion story, picking up where we left off. But of course, we got the scope video today, which kind of allows us to touch base on uh, what has been going on a little bit. So I do, I do want to talk about the scope video just in case this has. Um, Ash already told. Uh, yeah, that's right. I've been covering this for all week, but uh, I have a lot to say about the scope video, and I think it'll be a good opportunity to kind of catch, maybe po possibly catch people up if this is the first time you've been paying attention to this kind of thing, or whatever. Um, yeah, so. Let's just jump into that. I, actually, before we do, I do want to say thank you so much to uh, V-Rod for the gifted membership in the beginning um, uh, before the, I began. I do have a, I am very excited to announce that I now have more members than I have ever had, I believe, which means I actually can have a new emote. So what I was thinking is I'm going to put up a poll later today to see what we should have is the next emote. Um, but this is by and large, thank you to those of you who do the gifted subs. Um, you know, it's, it's a great way to welcome people into the community or to help out people within the community. Um, I had a different point with that. That wasn't quite related. Oh, well. I haven't read the ticker yet. We're going to go over the ticker too. 
Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into what happened to the ready all pull. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to talk about. What I don't understand what you mean, lazy one. Hey, sheesh, thank you for that and all of your support. Um, so the I don't know. Um, the other thing I was going to say is God, I keep losing it. The ticker. Oh, well. I keep being distracted. So let's see if I remember it later. All right, scope video. Oh, yeah, radial menu usage. Thank you. That's actually what I've been trying to remember again. Thank you, Lazy One, for keeping me on track. Uh, yeah, we could talk about that if you want to. Um, I've, I, it was more just an entertaining thing. Um, I plan on doing more of those kinds of things just to kind of engage with people. But a whole lot of you responded. Hold on, let me see if I can pull up uh, that. And yeah, so I uh, it appears uh that about half of you uh and I, I, we got two hundred and twenty five responses, which is why I kind of want to do more of these now because. You know, if I'm getting this many responses, I think that's actually kind of cool. Uh, and I kind of want to do some more of these, like, impromptu po polls. But uh, nearly half of people, I have not compelled uh, to be able to do the radio mouse, uh, radio button. Um, and the rest of it, actually, this is pretty close to what I would have expected. Just based on the reactions I get from people um, who... I try to convince to do the radio mouse button. You know, I'd say about a quarter of them are already using it on the left mouse button and they're stuck in their ways. Half or over, I, I'd say that over half of them actually are um, uh, rejected outright. Um, there's always at least somebody, when I'm telling somebody to move it to right mouse button, there's always somebody in the audience that's like, I use left mouse button, it's great. Um, and the middle mouse button, those are for true rebels who have thought about it a little bit. You know, those are kind of pretty rare, but I, I commend them. I usually actually use my middle mouse button for broadcast radial menu when I think about it. So, yeah. Um, there's that. Back to what we were looking at. What were we looking at? Where was it? Uh-oh, where is it? Hold on. <laughs> What? Where did it go? Oh, there's so many more tabs. I have so many tabs. Hold on. There it is. Okay. <laughs> She's better gank sheesh. You better not gank sheesh. Okay. So, uh, let's go through the video, uh, bit by bit. Upwell has started construction. Um, okay, so the first headline says, Mobile tractor unit destroyed in ritual scholars. In, in ritual scholars are calling previously unrecorded kinds of heresy. Uh, this is a reference to the, um, the post about the very first um of the upwell consortium mobile tractor units being sacrificed to bob in wormhole space uh and then making a big deal about that. of a prototype or uh president agard praises upwell's innovative use of technology that's a big piece of um this just sounds very st stock president agard deathless custodians reportedly acquired kidnapped camel tech uh geneticists yeah so while uh offered by fraternity while fraternity did return most of them uh the the 
geneticists from the raided caravan um, back to Kemeltech for the bounty of one billion each, as uh, Kemeltech agreed to. But at least one of them was set aside and brought to the Deathless. Oh, the news article's out now? Sweet. Hold on. Yay. So yeah, um Yeah. In talk well, this is all out of order, but uh one trillion isk worth of assets destroyed in Capsuleer battle in the Abazon Genesis. Yeah, huge battle over a Fortazar happened uh recently in Abazon. Fears of mass hysteria and belief of a secret wormhole conspiracy theory on the rise. Yeah, this is the thing. Like I keep seeing little bits about this wormhole war. Um I have been asked about it. I was told it was kicking off. I I have no comment until so I I have feel like I have any kind of idea what's going on. Uh Tribal Council's review upwell leak in rare public session. I find that interesting because like so this leak was found in operations center comms stations in faction warfare space. So it could just be that it was like a security violation, that this was something being, uh, you know, sent around top secret and we grabbed it along with a lot of the other stuff that we grab. Um, I find it interesting that the tribal council is the only one that are actively like acting on this. And I think this is important because since Upwell sent out negotiations to all four empires separately and distinctly from each other, I think it's worth assuming or like it's worth watching how each empire individually reacts to Upwell's decisions, right? Because the Caldari have clearly they have a strong tie with Upwell and they've been one of their bigger uh supporters in this you know new transition. Um the Amar uh there was something about the Amar Oh yeah, they, the Amar was starting to talk about negotiations with them, I thought. Um, but the point is is that whether they become positive or negative against the uh, up what Upwell is doing is some, going to be perhaps something to pay attention to and something for the, the Empire's yet again to differ over. Uh, in Taki Autonomous uh, hold economic summit to consider alternative to tourism. Uh Intaki is kind of a mess, and we're going to be talking about that in the other part today. Um, but if you're in a Galente station, you can hear an advertisement for Intaki virtual tours. Because the problem is, is that the Intaki used to make a ton of its money from tourism. They have a beautiful culture and beautiful land, that is the, and their culture has been ransacked in the last decade. And their area has been turned into a war zone. So um, they don't have any real tourism anymore. They only have virtual tourism. So, you know, that's a problem for them. And then, yeah, that's all of them. I am one of the wormhole alliances attacking laser hawks. I can tell you all about it. Well, not today, but if you hop on the discord, we can chat. Uh, a semicolon should be after ritual and before scholars. Mobile tractor unit destroyed in... No, the, the problem is there's no what. Mobile tractor units destroyed in what ritual scholars are calling previously unrecorded kinds of heresy. The problem is, is that it sounds like... It, it sounds like the... The ritual scholars are what the thing's being destroyed in instead of the ritual uh, scholars doing the calling. But then it shifts to the, the calling and there's no more noun. So if you specify that it is the ritual scholars that are calling instead of the ritual scholars being the thing that the mobile tra tractor unit's destroyed in, then it tracks. No semicolon needed. Thank you for taking me down this rabbit hole. I'm sure everybody... Pre everyone thanks the lazy one. 
I'm kidding. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, let's keep going because there's more to the actual uh, video. Upwell has started construction of a prototype orbital structure in low orbit above the planet of Ovakin 6. But that doesn't make sense either. That would have to be a mobile tractor unit destroyed in a ritual. Scholars are calling it a new heresy. Or scholars are calling a new heresy, if you're making heresy the new the thing being happening. But they're saying that the destruction of the mobile tractor unit is the new heresy. So the scholars are calling the destruction of the ritual. Yes, yeah, well, I, that's what I'm saying. Scholars which, or, or ritual which scholars, or that scholars could be, it could be that scholars too. All right, nobody's here for this. We're going to keep going. Uh... No specific details have been released regarding the purpose of the structure. However, Upwell is extending an invitation to Capsuleers offering rewards for the submission of rogue drone-related materials. The drone graviton emitters can be obtained from okay. rogue drone anomalies yeah, and these are the requirements. or possibly purchased on the regional market. Moreover, participants stand... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like the fact that they are uh, giving everybody a warning. Hey, by the way, people are actively ganking at the site. You know, and this is something that I really like about CCP because... Um, this is kind of how they manage it, right? Like, the players are ganking players here. That's kind of ruining it for some people. But that is emerging gameplay. So CCP doesn't act directly against it, but CCP will put out a notice about it. Uh, the same thing happened with the original Burn Jita event, in fact. The Burn Jita was kind of a big challenge to CCP to see if CCP would get in the way of their attempts to ruin the trade hub for an entire day. Um, and CCP just put out a Concord traffic advisory warning to everybody as they logged in. Uh, and, and that was it. That was, that was, I mean, because that's the in-universe response to that, right? So I kind of respect that about CCP. But, uh, the big thing I wanted to look at though is of course this. So these things are cool and interesting. So we've seen the, I've seen the one on the left before, but I haven't seen the one on the right before today. Um, if we look at the details on the thing, it says, wait, hold on. Because this says fe feasibility in progress, undetermined, undetermined. But the copy that I saw earlier, oh man, hold on. I just realized this is different than the one I saw earlier. I thought they were the same one. Now I've got to go check. Where is... I love relying on the EVE subreddit. Where is it? Are you serious? I thought for sure somebody posted a video about it and then it was on arcs discord and there was a youtube oh my god hold on this is look if this is your first time watching my show uh this is why you watch it live right it's um you get to watch me mess up all right do i have Nope, I don't think I got it. All right, never mind. All right, there was a different video because it says in that video the tractor beam has a 300-kilometer range. Um, I know, the best streaming ever. Let's just move on. Uh, so the one that I saw that was partially completed by players on the ARC Discord said it had a, ma a tra uh, maximum range. Of oh, no, it. I apologize to everyone. So 
it does say 300 kilometers right there. It's just this more videos thing covers that up. So I didn't even think about that. Whatever. Okay, great. Fine. So what I think this left one is, what I think the left one is, is, no, it says it right there. It's right there. Uh, so what I think the left one is, is the capital tractor beam, because that is the one that has 300 kilometer range, right? Hold on. Um, Nope. Hold on. What? Hold on. I'm doing it again, aren't I? Hold on. At least I can show you this time. Hold on. Give me a second. Optimal range 200. Optimal range 300. Wait, wait, wait. So it isn't the same. I thought that this value matched one of the upwell's value. That's why I wanted to double check. Okay, well, so then I'm not 100% sure what this left-hand thing is. Um, some people have suggested it could be some sort of drone. I do think that, like, in-space integration, I think that this suggests it could be part of the actual device, the larger device. But it's the left, it's the right one that I want to bring attention to. Um... Do we get a good look? There we go. Nope, nope, nope. Don't you dare. So if we see these things go like this. All right, hold on. Never mind. I might be told I might have to take back everything I've ever said. Um This is all very breaking, so this is what you get. Oh, shoot. If we look at the structure as it's being manufactured, we can see that it's like an arrow pointing towards the planet. I thought it was away from the planet. But now that I look at this closer, live, you can see that the it's like an arrow that points to this long thing, and then there's this piece, right? So if we go to the main one, we would expect to see, like, here's the main, here's the piece, and then it goes this way, and then there's the, uh, the branch at the end. Uh, I still think that this suggests it is, this is, I still think that this, rec this, I still think that this shows that it, this is the future war barge for Upwell, right? That, this thing is the thing that will be hung in space to put troops on the ground and pull them up. Yeah. Well, it's a space elevator, but for what, though? Like, is it going to be for PI? Is it going to be for something new? I think that this is going to be, at least in part, for Vanguard. Maybe even might uh, tie into insurgencies. Because remember, the insurgencies were originally going to be uh, pro eating com, but people were super against that uh, because a lot of the people that were, um, well, to be honest, a lot, there's a lot of bad blood against uh, eating com at this point. So, uh, by even by most of all, by the people who were pro eating com. So rather than that, um, and to because a lot of faction warfare dudes like maybe had anti eating com standings, so now they're having to like bring in rats that don't like them. So um, like it was shifted from being an eating com thing to an upwell thing, and so I think that what we're seeing here is kind of CCP rapidly because the original design of Nova was that you were going to be working. Or probably was that you're going to be working with Aegis under Kashia Valkanir. Well, Kashia Valkanir is now um, the was the head of eating or the 
Triglavian defenses and is the, in charge of Edencom. So she would have naturally been in charge still, but because Edencom isn't trusted anymore by anybody, both in game and out, uh, instead it's basically being shifted over quickly to um, the upwell. You can see this actually best. Now, this is what we talk about here. You can see that best because this is important. This is about the future too. Um, actually, I'm getting to a prediction, so don't worry about that. Uh, if we go to, how do I, how does her name get spelled? Yeah. So when the insurgency rats, uh, first started spawning, like the extra ones, and they were dropping the stuff that can be turned into the laundering facility, these, this is the specialty item that you can get. The officer mod is Cassia's Val uh, modified Vortron tuning system, which would mean that like Cassia Valkyrie is the officer that this is tied to, the head of Edencom. But they're now Upwell guys, and you turn it into Upwell, and yet it gives you this, uh, this Vortron tuning uh, thing. And the reason why that is is because again, at that point it was like at the eleventh hour they switched it from Edencom to Upwell. And so this is like one of the last remnants of it. But in tune with that, they also introduced consortium weapons. So they have the consortium Vortron protector, consortium Vortron tuning system. So while they they didn't have an officer to replace Kashia, they still um, they changed the faction, or the faction is consortium. And now we also have consortium tractor beams and consortium mobile tractor units. So what does this look like to me? This looks like they're filling out a future consortium LP store. That's all I'm saying. Or some sort of like loyalty system. Like an LP or reward system like an LP store. See, I got to the future. There's a method to that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I've been going over this for the last few weeks or two weeks, so I recommend going back and watching those videos. If you just wait for me to show up in your subscribers feed, uh, sometimes my live videos don't show up as like live is treated separately than videos. So if like, if you just come to my YouTube channel, um, you may not see my live videos. So you have to click on the live tab to see all my live videos. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do that, whether or not I want to just edit them down and re-release them real quick as edited. So that way they get shown to everybody else or whatever. But in the meantime, uh, make sure to like the, the, the video and comment and share it with a friend so that way you know we can get some engagement because the 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 live streams uh archives don't get treated the same as normal videos it seems yeah it uh it should have been eating calm faction instead of consortium that i i assume that that is what it would have been originally yes uh but yeah the thing is here is that like what gets me is how close this looks like to the ship caster. Now, I don't see a place for the like science balls to go, but if you not the ship caster, but like the um the end point of the ship casters. But at the same time, if we know that there's like this is personnel. The thing is, is that like, here's the thing. This, this is what got me is that this piece of it, man. Like, hold on. In this picture, it doesn't extend much further past like a little bit and then around like a round part, right? Actually, no, it's not even a round part. So it ends basically where these two arms finish off, right? Shortly thereafter, certainly after the um, this slotted one. But if we go back and look, 
we can see that, like, by all rights, right here should be its end. If it's going to build out that way, the way that we would expect from the diagram. So, what is this thing? And is it, like, tied to the Asbel at all? You know? Um, because these are modular pieces. I don't know. It'll be interesting to know. Or it'll be interesting to find out. We'll keep watching on it. And you can uh, keep checking out the channel. And subscribe to the channel. Uh, we will cover it as soon as it breaks. Or be on the... Uh, actually, if you really want to be on it as soon as it breaks, you want to be on my Discord and our Arcs Discord. Because that's where things actually break. Just in case I can't get to a show in time. All right. Anything else? <laughs> I do the editing too. Danny works on the bigger projects. I work on like the chop chops. All right. Um... <clears throat> By the way, I have uh, peppermint tea today. With a string in my mouth uh, to help my throat. Let's hope my throat keeps up today. Like, it was bad last night, so... Let's hope for the best. I really wanted to be able to finish this this weekend, so let's go ahead and get uh, started, shall we? When we last left our intrepid heroes, our merry band of legionnaires, uh, this was happening. Uh, you know, if we... Uh, just in case you missed it. Now, Mortar, Mor Mordu wasn't really involved in invasions. Um, Edencom, well, Aegis, Concord, and then later Edencom were one of the big people that reacted to invasions. You would have thought Mordu would have gotten involved, but unfortunately, um, he was busy elsewhere. So let's keep, let's get into it. In order to start this story, we need to talk a little bit about the Intaki religion. The Intaki religion, uh, called Ida, believe in reincarnation. And by believe in, I mean they actually perform reincarnation. Uh, they appear to have some sort of technology um, that allows them to transfer consciousness from one person to another. And so they have a practice of older Intaki being reborn by projecting their consciousness into, um, you know, one of the children. So uh, this is part of the Ida faith, and um, like the technology that they have is largely unknown. That's important later, um, and we don't know really where the Intaki kit got it from, which you know conspiracy theories apply. But like they always, they had this tech when the Galente first got there. So there is actually their religious leaders called the Adama who have the capacity, they have the same tech as the Mimitar. Uh, the Mimitar, I don't believe have that. The, this isn't the same as like the, um, the elders or whatever, but kind of like the elders, the Adama the religious leaders are thought to be so like empowered that they can perform this reincarnation without the use of, without the requirements of the medical devices. Right. So, uh, there was an Adama who there's an Adama that was, had disappeared for quite some time. Uh, that showed up here. So let's just read this. 
Kana Kingdom. A reborn Adama, long thought lost by adherents of the Intaki Way or Ida, has been discovered in Kana Kingdom, uh, claims one of their monks. Wafenik Urelan, a monk from the Ida monasteries of Intaki Prime, claims to have found the lost Adama while traveling abroad in the Siavin Con Sivadin constellation. Urelan discovered an Intaki slave named Aeolia Inwaro early last month aboard the Pure Faith's Harvest, a cruiser owned by Sabaran Atsil Kufail of Vizila in the Khanid Kingdom. Wafnik Urelan claims that Waro has several characteristics that confirm his extraordinary theory. Urelan intended to purchase Waro from Sabaran Kufail upon its discovery. However, Lord Kufail refuses to sell and Waro to Urelan, stating that the Ida monk is obviously mistaken. Urelan is now claiming that Lord Kufail acquired the slave illegally, citing a lack of transaction or punitive records. Lord Kufail has denied the accusations in the strongest term and accused the monk of illegal missionary work on behalf of foreign religious colonizers. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like that. The Adama, whose Intaki are held, uh, those Intaki who are held to have been reborn without the assistance of technology are few. Allegedly, as little as 500 are present in the cluster, according to claims made by elements of the Ida faith. The story they tell is that in YC-99, a senior Idama of Intaki Prime died from health complications associated with natural aging. Prior to her death, the Idama left a letter explaining that she intended to be reborn in a distant land, far from Intaki Prime, supposedly in order to learn the plight of those beyond Federation borders. Despite numerous physical descriptors of the person she would be reborn as, the Ida faithful were un apparently unable to find her, and w the search was eventually called off. With the Adama lineage declared lost, it came as a great surprise for the Ida monasteries of Intaki Prime when Erelon claimed to have discovered the lost Idama. Recounting the lost Idama's prophetic letter, the Ida monk claimed that Enwaro showed all of the prophetical uh, prophecies-sized physical characteristics, including a birthmark along the collarbone. Erelon attempted to purchase Enwaro from the holder in an effort to bring her to Intaki Prime in order to conduct extensive testing to confirm her identity. Expressing the value of Enwaro, a secretarial aide to his holdings and activities, Lord Kufail has explained to ACN that the alleged missionary proclamations brought Enwaro considerable distress. Aeloia Inwaro, fitted with a transcranial microcontroller in the Kingdom Manor, was unaware that she was even a slave and states that she has no recollection of past lives. As a result of Irulan's persistent questioning, the Sabaran found it necessary to make changes to the microcontroller in an effort, effort to pacify her. Having returned to Intaki, Irulan claims that he, that he conducted an investigation into Lord Kufail's acquisition of Enwaro. The Intaki monk says that Enwaro is a, ge a generational slave, but alleges that there is no record of a lineage or prior punitive measures that led to her enslavement. In addition, Irulan is now making a claim that the holder obtains and replaces slaves inordinately quickly. The Ida monasteries are reported to have initially expressed skepticism, but now they say they have been convinced by Erlan's research. The Ida leadership has since announced their findings to the Intaki Assembly, seeking action by higher, higher authority within the Glente Federation. The Khan and Kingdom authorities have dismissed any possibility of infringing on the rights of Saber and Kufail under pressures of Glente interference based on blasphemous nonsense. The court chamberlain's office has confined itself to noting that the matter is within the authority of the royal houses of the Khan and Kingdom of the Empire. All right. So, <clears throat> well, yeah, everything the Amar says is a bit rich. So, in 2018, before uh, we, we left off, um, August, so almost six months before we left off, the lost Adama was found, Right. Then there were attacks aboard Ren Station. Uh, Amar and Khanid Holdings were attacked in chemical and viral bombings. Um, and the attack on Kaha with this is a series, basically a series of death glow attacks begin occurring, striking at Khanid Kingdom areas. And then through all of this, like at the same time, two days after Kaha, which is considered one of the biggest 
uh, uh, terrorist attacks recently, um, the uh, the Ida the Intaki go and attempt to raid the uh, Khanid ship to free the lost Adama. They fail to capture him, but uh, or to to get the slave, but like Khanid is pissed because of this, and says the Royal Khanid Navy stated that. that any and all attacks by Intaki extremists will be dealt with as piracy and met with the sternest possible measures. So the Intaki are, yeah, see, it says, additionally, we can now show that earlier terrorist attacks in Zersem was carried out by the order of an Amatar blood cultist working hand in hand with a Mimitar terrorist. After autopsy, it is several rebel operatives we killed were addicts, addicts of the vile death glow drug and the viral attack included components of the Inserum mutagen. So, this we've covered this in other videos, um, but this was the death glow attacks. And the idea was, is that the Intaki were working in coordination with death glow hunters and other, and other operative, you know, Amatar people within the Amatar to make these attacks, um, which causes all kinds of chaos within the Amar. But in the end, we see, uh, sources in counted in Kaldari state claim that Khanid Royal Commodore Ares Nomaria has met with rep representatives of Intara direct action and Ana Kanobo brigade PMCs with a view of securing their services to, for counter terrorist operations. And I can't, I mean, like these names always come up together and they come up to, when they come up together, we think one thing deathless, right? So, uh, deathless is definitely has a finger in the pie here, but we're going to keep an eye on this Ana Kanobo brigade specifically. So, um, from there, hold on. Is this the first one? Yes, I think it is. From there, uh, Mordu's Legion to hold large-scale exercises in Intaki and Luminaire systems with Kaldari and Galente PMCs. So, Mordu's Legion has uh, announced that it intends to host a series of exercises in the Intaki and Luminaire systems in the coming weeks. These exercises will involve a number of para private military companies, including Kandata Revenor, Isuada Tactical, and Kirkland Risk Control, Reshif Interstellar Strategy, Valor Spec Ops, and Zumari Force Projection. So these are the guys that are on are working with Mordu at this time. The announcement follows on for last month's summit on Antaki Prime, at which Mordu's Legion gathered a number of Kaldari and Galente PMCs to discuss the private military and mercenary contracting sectors across the state and federation, right? So then... Uh, we get... What is it? This is, nope, that's not it. On the 21st, uh, sorry, on the 412, we get the announcement. And then five days later, we get, you know, um, confirmation. Mortis Legion organized PMC exercises continue on Kaldari Prime and Intaki 5. Um, what? Is this right? Sure. As the invasions are going on, we see uh, New Eden Power hold summit on invasion, defense, and cooperation. FDZ4 TAC A Geminate. In response to the in uh, invitation of the Society of Conscious Thought, the New Eden Powers, comprising of the five members of the Inner Circle, together with Concord delegates, have assembled at a secure location in the SCT controlled system of FDZ4 TAC A. Delegations from many other sovereign powers have been invited, including the Intaki Syndicate, Mortis Legion, Or, and Servant Sisters of Eve, representatives from associate po uh, policies such as Amatar Mandate, Condon Kingdom, and Thucker Tribe are also in attendance. Extraordinarily, representatives of the Angel Cartel, Garistus, and Serpentis organizations have been invited at the special insistence of the SOCT. The Scope Galactic Hour with Brett Gloriax has been informed that no delegations from either the Blood Raider Covenant or Sanchez Nation has been invited to the summit. So, uh, yeah. And then, is there another one in here? Uh, yeah. Intaki terrorists carry out attacks against Continent Kingdom. R RKN dismisses claims as fabrication. Um...
federal state uh, Senate funds and invokes war powers extension of mercenary contracts in Luminaire and in Taki Prime. Okay? Next. Um, so, two months after the exercises on Intaki Prime begins, um, and after the, the security summit, by about uh, 10 days, we get... Um, oh, we get an update from the SOCT, which is that FD-74 attack A Gemini, although no public communique has been released, the Scope Galactic Hour with Rick Loriax understands the SOCT hosts a summit meeting between the major Concord powers and many minor sovereign entities have broken up. Sources indicate that while no common platform for defense against the Triglavian debt was agreed on, there was a broad and general agreement uh, between the attending states and organizations to cooperate where possible and avoid any actions impending counter Triglavian operations. Chances are this is like the beginning of Edencom, right? Attendings of FD 74 TAC uh, A summit meeting included Core M Core Empires, together with Associate States, Amatar Mandate, Kana Kingdom, Thucker Tribe, independent states and organizations, including Intaki Syndicate, Mortis Legion, Outer Ring, uh, Excavations, Upwell Consortium. That's weird, because up. Uh, that's like saying like my arm, my leg, my head, and I all went all all went to the store, right? At any rate, and servant sister of Eve, the summit was uh, particularly notable for having included invited de delegations from the Angel Cartel, Grissus, and Serpentis. The Scope Galactic Hour with Rhett Gloriax also learned that Colonel Kashia Valkyrie, Provost Marshal of Aegis, personally attended the summit and negotiated certain, certain additional concessions pertaining to the freedom of actions of Aegis troops in the duration of the emergency. So yeah, almost certainly like kind of the beginning threads of, of what would then become Edencom. <clears throat> but we have Mercenaries Clash on Intaki Prime. On a Kenobo brigade accused of desecration by Ida monasteries. So we have on a Kenobo brigade, right? Um, that is conducting operations in Intaki. But is this before? No, this is after. Okay. We're still not there. And if we remember, Ana Kenobu Brigade came from, uh, was one of the groups that the Amar guy, uh, the Kana dude was talking to, right? That's mad at the Antaki. So, then, Where is it? Um, oh, Anakonobu was in talks with Khanid, and then he smashed Intaki religious sites, huh? Yeah. So the point is, is that like, I can't, I couldn't find off the or like right now as I was looking for stuff for like when this all started. But here we go. Anakonobu Brigade justifies Intaki Five operations using corporate reparations provisional uh, provisions in Kaldari CEM WPA zone. In Taki Placid, the Anakonobo Brigade has issued a formal notice that its mercenary operations in Intaki 5 are in pursuit of corporate reparations in breaking an, uh, an extraordinary news with the Intaki system. The home system. So, if you remember last time uh, when we were talking to Lorelite, we talked about how uh, the LDPS uh, 205th or whatever division uh, and the use of corporate reparations and how it had been used before. This is the, how it's been used before. The home system of the Intaki culture is currently within the Kaldari-controlled portion of the disputed zone between the Kaldari State and the Glente Federation specified by the Concord Emergency Militia War Powers Act. The Kaldari PMC asserts that it's operating on behalf of a client with well-founded uh, founded claims to recover reparations from properties and resources linked to certain radical sects of the Ida movement. So, in case you were like, oh, I think it might have been coincidental. Um... Reports from Intaki 5 claim that the brigade has, quote, sacked a dozen Ida monasteries and burned down a score of attached villages and communal plantations. Time out. I want to go back to what I said about the Ida. The Ida religion believes in reincarnation using special technology that allows the transfer of consciousness between people and potentially other things. 
So, uh, and some rare medical technology. They see these as holy artifacts. So keep in mind this, that when you see religious stuff, when it comes to the Intaki, there is some pretty advanced tech behind that religion. The statutes uh, uh, of Intaki Five. The statutes of Intaki Five have been regularly been a matter of some uncertainty. The status, the status of Intaki Five has regularly been a matter of some uncertainty, as control of the Placid region and Intaki system in particular has shifted over the long years of the Caldari Galente militia conflict. A long-standing tacit agreement between the Caldari State and Galente Federation is generally allowed for the Intaki Assembly to maintain its sovereignty and control of Intaki Five, even during periods where the Caldari militia forces have controlled the system itself. The Caldari State Chief Executive Panel, representing the balance of consensus among the Big Eight Caldari Megacorps, has been content to leave the arrangements undisturbed since the fall of Tybus Heth Provost's regime in YC-115. The role of Mortis Legion in maintaining this situation has undoubtedly been key as an organization trusted in both the Caldari state and broad sections of Intaki society. However, the Scopes Galactic Hour with Brett Gloriax understands that Caldari corporate law allows a significant degree of latitude in which the more independent corporations can, in principle, operate when the system is under, uh, is under state control as part of the war zone. Despite this, it is thought unlikely that even such an organization as the Anakonobu Brigade would take the step of forcibly seizing properties and resources on Intaki 5 without the backing of at least one mega corporation. For its part, the Ishikone Mega Corporation, which has long maintained a major interest in investment in the system, has signaled its intention to challenge the Anakonobo Brigade's use of corporate reparations provisions as justification for seizures and related operations on Intaki 5. Uh, and that's it. That leads to... After a noticeable reduction of drifter attacks on null sec structures earlier this week, it appears that another wave of attacks is forming. Adding to the confusion, Concord's SCC division has announced that New Eden's Fluid Router FTL communications network is under enormous pressure due to the combined impact of the Triglavian and drifter invasions. Resupply of the vital quantum entangled 4-helium superfluid used in the network is increasingly under threat. To ensure sustainable operation of the FTL comms network and guard against the risk of strategic communications being compromised, the SCC will be enforcing reduced bandwidth across its NullSec routers. With drifter strikes continuing for over a week, this assault represents the first major offensive by the Drifters since their attack on the Amar Empire four years ago. Hitting dozens of systems during the first wave of attacks, the Drifters roamed between jump gates, asteroid belts, and structures, attacking anyone and anything they encountered. Their fleets were often striking multiple targets simultaneously in each system. After a brief pause in the assault, the drifters seem now to be initiating another wave of attacks. Not only are they attacking structures, but they also seem to show more focus towards hunting down and destroying individual pilots. It should be noted that drifters, if given the opportunity, will always mercilessly pod capsuleers. Taking both Concord and Capsuleers completely by surprise, the attacks have created considerable concern and confusion among the NullSec power blocks. Once the predicted local communications blackout is imposed, Capsuleer warlords will have to deal with the developing situation without intelligence gathered from automated registration on local solar system channels. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Or were you distracted by the by the drifters? Let's go back. Where is it? No, it's before that. Right. So here we go. Lidai Protection Services, uh, Lidai Protection Service forces landing on Intaki Five as mercenary conflict develops. So now, Lidai has sent their actual, uh, effectively their military, the LDPS, um, in to assist on a Kenobo Brigade on Intaki 5. Mask is off and all that. 
Let's let's just finish this one up. I like this. Intelligence gathered from automated registration on local solar system channels. The SCC has additionally stated that if the scale of the attacks continues, then their fluid routers are not expected to support full services in NullSec beyond another week or so. In light of this, it seems clear that the NullSec blackout Y'all, yeah. will take place very soon. This is Lena Amber reporting Blackout's for the Blackout's coming. All right. Um, Empires urge Concord Assembly action on New Eden Defense Fund's pr proposal. Um, July 29th, YC 121, 2019. July Genesis. Debate in Concord Assembly over proposed New Eden Defense Fund in week weekend. Oh, yeah. We don't actually care about this part. But this is when we start to, uh, this is the taxes or the New Eden Defense Fund. This is more formation of uh, Eden Comp stuff. But in the background, Quave Corporation joins Ishikoni's case against Anakonobo Brigade and Lydai over Intaki 5 crisis. Actually, if I go back here. Um, yeah. We missed one, I think. Lydai. Did we miss one? Either way, whatever. We'll just use this. Lidai Protection Services pursuing corporate interests in conflict zone on Intaki 5. Intaki Placid. Over a week after its troops were reported to have landed on Intaki 5, the Lidai Protection Services LDPS has released a statement claiming that its 203rd Combined Asset Protection Regiment, same dudes, is engaged in operations in pursuit of Lidai's corporate interests in the Placid conflict zone. The statement coincided with formal response to the Kaldari Business Tribunal after reports of the LDPS landings on Kante Yavat Transorbital Launch Facility in on the Intaki ho homeworld were brought before it by Ishikone Corporation. The Kante Yavat facility is currently occupied by forces of the Anakonobu Brigade following its own corporate reparations operation on Intaki 5. The arrival of the 203rd's CAP Regiment, large contingent of mechanized infantry and armor supported by aerospace fighters, has aroused fears that further de depre depredations against Intaki pro uh, property are envisioned by the combined Lidai and Anakonobo force. The Ishikone Corporation has formally requested that it, its petition before the CBD, CB, CBT against Anakonobo Brigade to be extended to include LDPS and as a defendant party. Fears of serious conflict breaking out on Intaki 5 has been heightened by the reports of numerous mercenary units moving into positions around the Kanta Yavat facility. Additionally, the Intaki Assembly owned planetary militia has been reportedly reported to be mobilizing reserves and deploying to positions that are speculated to be of interest to the LP, LDPS OB forces. Capsular organizations with Kaldarian and Intaki interests have also held an Intaki security summit with an initiative welcomed by the Intaki Assembly and the Ishikone Corporation. So here we go. LDPS uh, and Anakonobu Brigade versus Ishikone and uh, Mordu and his buddies. Round one fight. Uh, then a week later, or whatever, Lidai Protection Services raid monasteries and medical research facilities on, on Antaki 5. So once again, monasteries and medical research facilities. On a Kenobo brigade reportedly engages in Taki militia and Kandata Revenor troops. So there we go. I've been kind of up until this point, I've been sort of wondering, like, did Anago did did Mordu do those combat operations on Intaki prior to all of this? Uh because he was like trying to create an in for uh, on a Kenobo to get there, like if bring on a Kenobo in and be part of this exercise, so that way they're already there and they can do the invasion, or is Mordu acting against on a Kenobo brigade? And here we have a very clear clue because if we remember, Kandata Revenor troops was one of the paramilitary organizations that was coming to do training with Mordu's Legion. Okay, so. Um, The Anakonobo Brigade is working with the LDPS, and the Intaki Militia is working with Kanata Revenor troops, which is uh, likely working with uh, Mordu. 
Yeah, he's working with Morty. Yeah. So then in three days, we get uh, Quaife Corporation joins Ishikone's case against Anakanova Brigade and Lidai over in Taki 5 Crisis. Uh, Kondata Ravenor troops in Taki and covering in Taki militia retreat to positions secured by Asuada Tactical PMC, which is another one of the PMCs that Morty brought here. Morty's Legion secures communications of Navi Akat and in Taki, uh, as in Taki assemblies, hold conference with federal Fe Senate. So I think that there was a little bit of, I think that uh, <coughs> Mordu caught wind, uh, uh, caught wind of the idea that this invasion was going to be happening. And so conducted the training in these two locations to ensure that they were, he, they had extra troops in place to protect against uh, whichever place they might decide to strike that they're responsible for. Uh, on August 1st, we have standoff in, on Antaki Prime as Lidai refuses to withdraw forces from key locations. Despite protests from the Antaki Assembly, Federal Senate, and Morty's Legion, the Lidai Protection Services has refused to withdraw its forces from several locations on Antaki Prime. In illegal filings from the Kaldari... In legal filings... I always read that one wrong because uh, of the in. In legal filings at the Kaldari Business Tribunal, Lidai representatives confirmed that Anakanova Brigade prior private military company is operating on the planet under contract with the Mega Corporation. The fifth planet on the Antaki system, an ancestral homeworld of the large and influential Antaki diaspora, has been the scene of a low-intensity conflict since the Anakanobo Brigade and LDPS began operations there almost two months ago. The threat of serious warfighting was at its highest levels when OB and LDPS forces broke out of fortified positions at the Kenta Yavat Transorbital Launch Facilities in the foothills of northern Akat Mountains. Their subsequent sweep, sweep through the Ida monasteries and attached research centers in the region brought them into conflict with units of the Intaki Assembly's militia. Serious fighting was avoided by the overmatched Intaki militia units were forced to retreat south to secured uh, zones around the Intaki administrative capital of Na Nava Naviki Akat. So the militia and them have Navi uh, Akat as their kind of that's their capital, and that's their stronghold. And then the Kanta Yavat Transorbital Launch Facility. Basically, they came down and captured the um, their space elevator. So, okay. Um, while Mortis Legion has confirmed that it has deployed freshly arrived uh, troops at positions defending L Lenoika, the largest city on Antaki Prime and the cultural capital of the planet. Reports of heavily defended LDPS convoys moving back and forth between Kenta Yavat and a number of locations in northern Akat Mountains has been independently confirmed by Concord conflict monitors. Colonel Anna Yomaniro of the LDPS 203rd Combined Asset Protection Regiment issued a statement declaring her unit operations to be in accordance with, oh, sorry, quote, in accordance with Kaldari State corporate law and in principles of reclamation from conflict zones and territorial possessions of the Kaldari people, end quote. The LDPS appear to be anticipating a lengthy stay at Kanta Yavad's defenses were reportedly augmented last night with detachments of LDC TAC, ISU TAC 8, TAC 118, Orachi self-propelled multiple rocket launchers and LDC SOMA 303 Itsumade Aero Aerospace Missile Batteries. Okay, so getting real. Then so eight days later, we get um, security situation on Taki 5 static but unstable, says Concord Conflict Monitors, opposing PMCs maintaining positions. Um, LIDI application to CBD, CBT for exemption from state economic guidance on top toxic waste disposal denied. Breaking LIDI Corporation studying options for relocating toxic waste to conflict zone sites. Yeah, they're really like snicking it. Now it's worth noting that Lidai does not own uh this uh, Ishikone or um Intaki by any stretch of the imagination, as far as I know, right? Like Ishikone are the owners of uh the from the auction. That's why they were given the contract. They've been supportive of Intaki for some time. We we saw that earlier in the pre invasion stuff. CEP and Kaldari Navy Greenlit G to four four expansion. Lidai Corporation signed ceasefire agreement with Intaki Assembly. Anakanobo Brigade withdrawing from Intaki 5. So now, 
uh, two months later, basically, since when conflict first begins. They raid a whole bunch of places, and then a ceasefire is made between Lydai and the Intaki Assembly. Anakanobu Brigade withdraws. Uh, Intaki dissidents allege Lydai being allowed to leave with plunder. Protesters claim ceasefire deal a betrayal. So people are very unhappy about this. Uh, there's uh, accusations that Intaki Assembly was bought off. Um, then when SEC... Uh, then this happens. Bandwidth and usage limitations on fast... Yes, everything I just said happened within like that this period of blackout. ...other than light communications in Nullsec were lifted by the SCC earlier this week. This marks the end of the two months blackout, which was primarily caused by drifter attacks on FTL infrastructure and quantum entangled four helium supplies across Nullsec. While communications have now been fully restored, Concord officials warn that communication service levels remain subject to change possibly at short notice. The Triglavians we'll have do expanded again. their invasion into low sec regions as Kanid, Aridia, and Moldenheath have come under Kentucky Prime protests against Lydai and Assembly Grow. Their attack in the last week. Reports from the fronts are mixed, but defenses seem to be holding. Low sec systems the lower Accords announces deployment of troops to Taki 5 in support of Systems federal... Genesis and the Forge defensive. have also been hit by new attacks as the Triglavians continue their pattern of shifting attacks around New Eden. These new fronts are in addition to continuing incursions into high security space by Triglavian world arcs and widespread scouting forces. The scope has acquired new footage from a previously unknown abyssal dead space pocket the imaging data appears to show an array of construction yards with a high level of activity. There are no completed ships visible in the footage, but comparisons with the Vexor, which entered the pocket and provided the footage, suggest the Triglavian ships being constructed can be rated as capital ships. The structural components that have been laid down so far... Rogue drones aren't dropping the new Chris ships. The road drones are dropping graviton emitters, which uh, Upwell wants. The Chris chips are being gotten from the convoys and from the uh, faction warfare data sites. Also appear to correspond to schematics from intercepted Triglavian messages. The intention behind this new shipbuilding activity remains unknown, but analysts believe the Triglavians are responding to the course of the war so far. Federal Marines take up positions around Lydai occupied launch facility and preparing to change their tactics. In other news, extensive renovations and a major expansion project have started on the Jita 44 Kaldari Navy Assembly Plant. Contracts for all aspects of the project were recently awarded to the PKN Interstellar Consortium, led by the CBD, Lydai, and NOH Megacore. By far the busiest trade hub in New Eden. The expansion of the station has long been considered overdue. The amount of daily traffic and storage requirements have caused overstretch for years, and much activity unrelated to trading or the naval facilities no. has progressively been relocated to other stations in Jita. The project's phased program of expansion is expected to take at least 12 months. This is Alton Havery oh, reporting God. for the scope. That's the most cursed end of the scope videos. All right, so. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, so the latest set of, um, Chris chips are the messages to the different empires are from those empires faction warfare data sites and the ones with the tractor beam and the skyhook thing, um, are from catching the convoys that are, that were going, uh, unannounced between Anamon and, or well, um, Avoinan and Avanon. Avanon. Av Avalon and Avanon. The place where Upwell is and the place where the Kaldari shipcaster is. I covered this in a different day, too. Okay. So, just to go over um, what's going on here, we had a couple of headlines there. Um, we have it.
Lidai negotiates lease for Kanta Yavat transorbital launch facility with Intaki Assembly. Mortis Legion confirms total withdrawal of Anakanobo Brigade forces from Intaki 5. So that's on the 16th. Um, the... I thought I had scope videos in here too. Darn it. Hold on. When was this? It was September? Oh. We are further down, right? Here. No, this is it. Light Eye negotiates at least. Yeah, okay, this is where we're at. Um, then major protests in Intaki cities at Light Eye deal with, uh, with assembly deal with Light Eye. Hundreds of thousands march in Lenoika and Navi Akat. Quaif Operation Corporation withdraws from Ishikone's case against Anakanoba Brigade and Lidai over in Taki 5, which is kind of weird. Um, but I assume that's because things have kind of resolved. At least some. And then Federal Marines reported to be landing on Intaki 5, supported by Federal Defense Union. LDPS 203rd Cap Regiment declares a thousand kilometer suborbital exclusion zone around Kanta Yavat. And Colonel Ana Yam. Yaminoro confirms authorization to enforce exclusion zone with AAS missiles. So they are going full on, like, you get within a thousand kilometers of us and we blow you up. So, you know, it's going well. Nine days later, more protests erupt in Intaki 5 as evidence of Lidai's payments to assembly members emerge. Con core conflict monitors ad advocate DMZ between Kanta Yavat and lines held by federal marines and Intaki militia. And Lidite Protection Services deny use of aerial de area denial munitions on Antaki 5. Cannot speak for mercenary units. Read, well, we let on a Kenobo Brigade do it. We didn't do it ourselves. All right, well, things are going well. A little under a month later, Antaki Assembly agrees to unconditional evacuation for Lidite forces on Antaki 5. How Sorum orders mobilization and reclaiming in reaction to alleged militia corruption. That's not necessarily related. Um, oh, no, this is actually a whole thing. Intaki Placid. The Intaki Assembly has signed an agreement providing the, un, quote, unconditional and unrestricted, unrestricted evacuation of LDPS 203rd Combined Asset Protection Regiment and Allied Forces from the Kanta Yavat Transorbital Facility, end quote. The agreement comes against the background of continuing Federal Defense Union control of the Viriat constellation and the presence of a Federal Marine force on Intaki 5 itself. The Scope Galactic Hour with Rhett Glory X has learned that the agreement between the Intaki Assembly and Lidai includes an undertaking to provide disarmament codes for the extensive array of disposable autonomous defense denial and interdiction, DDADDI, daddy, <laughs> I'm not calling it that, that uh, systems that are have been seeded in a wide band of territory surrounding the transorbital facility. Reports from Intaki 5 has alleged that the DADDI munitions and drones have been responsible for hundreds of deaths and injuries since the 203rd Cap Regiment retreated behind the fortifications in, in Kanto Yavat. Lidai representatives have disavowed responsibility for the DADDI systems in the region and claim that codes were obtained through intelligence operations against independent mercenary groups. <laughs> Desperate... Uh, or sorry, despite the seemingly noble goal of ins uh, ensuring the disarmament of countless deadly and indiscriminate weapons scattered across the exclusion zone, the Intaki Assembly has come under repeated fire from protesters, non-government organizers, and radical political parties over alleged payments made to Assembly members by Lai Dai. The scope understands that LDPS evacuation flights have already begun and are being escorted by Concord conflict monitoring units. And then, is there anything in here? Rioting in Intaki Five Cities in Lenioka and Navi Akat, Intaki Assembly House stormed. Intaki militia loyal to the Assembly reported fighting with militia, uh, rebel militias backing protesters. Federal Marines moved back to cities as Concord conflict monitors oversee Lidai evacuation. So this is all back to our flashpoint diplomacy.
Really? This one wasn't even in my list. Well, good thing I used this then. Uh, okay, so then... Two weeks later... We have... Uh, Geopolitics Wrangling Edition. In Taki Assembly, considering all options, as Ishikone and Mortis Legion formally decline to renew shipping and security franchise. So here it is. Here's the break. Here's the crack. People ask, oh, well, why doesn't, uh, you know, I thought Mortis Legion protected Intaki. Well, here we go. Intaki Placid. After two weeks of relative peace on Intaki 5, the Intaki Assembly has been meeting with representatives from the Galente Federation, Ishikone Corporation, and Mortis Legion to discuss the te tendering and transition period for the Intaki Systems Federal Shipping and Security Franchise. While it has been much speculated on for months, Ishikone and the Legion has now formally given notice that they do not intend to seek renewal. The Intaki Assembly is understood to be consulting with the federal administration over stopgap measures in, a sh in the short term. Ishikone Corporation Council Majima Umaka says, quote, The Ishikone Corporation has long regarded our involvement in the Intaki shipping and security franchises arrangement as a re remnant of a period where many mistakes were made. Ishikone Corporation is proud to have worked with Mortis Legion to shield the Intaki people from the excesses of the criminal Heth regime and the brutal realities of warfare carried out by the so-called emergency militias. But there comes a time for all enterprises to reach their natural conclusion. Now is that time for Ishikone and our partners in Mortis Legion in the matter of Intaki System SNS franchise. The latest news has unsettled many on Intaki 5, coming as it does so soon after an easy peace was established on the planet following the departure of the expeditionary forces of mercenary and corporate security troops led by Lai Dai Protection Services. There are many units belonging to various private military companies remaining on the surface, although most of these are allied to Ishikone, Mortis Legion, or the Itaki Assembly itself. There are also a sizable combined contingent of Federal Marines and Federal Defense Union troops present on the major cities of Lunoika and Nevada. Navi Akat. Additionally, talks are still ongoing between the Intaki Assembly, protest, or, uh, protest organizations, and rebel Intaki militia to achieve pro peaceful disarmament and rebel, uh, political amnesty. So, um, anything else? Lidai Corporation announced sub. Oh, yeah. So, Lidai Corporation announced subcranial nanocontroller technology after filing state patents in Kaldari's business tribunal. And uh, if you go look at the subcranial nanocontrollers, you can find them in game. We've talked about this many times, so I'm not going to go that deep into it, um, even though it's one of my favorite conspiracies. So the subcranial nanocontroller is an advanced component of the, from LIDAI intended for use in biomechanical and neuro-cybernetic implants in a similar fashion to the older transcranial controller technology owned and licensed by Ishikone. Implants using subcranial nanocontrollers are being marketed as cheaper, more flexible, and less intrusive. LIDAI is believed to have made some key breakthroughs in its development of this technology after acquiring medical research and technology in the course of asset recovery operations covered out, out, out by LIDAI Protection Services. Uh, yeah. It is believed that the Kanda Kingdom and Teshmarkon family are either incorporated this new technology, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah. That's why I kept on bringing up the medical stuff. So it's clear that LIDAI uses what they found on Intaki to develop the subcranial nanocontrollers which they then use to build uh, expert systems that we use today. Um, next. Mortis Legion commands, uh, Command announces departure from Kaldari Prime. Mortis Legion Command leadership on Kaldari Prime announces today that they plan to withdraw forces from the Kaldari homeworld over the next 12 months. The news part sparked concern as... Wait, no, this is a year ago. What am I doing? Why is this here? Did we not cover it before? No, I think we did. Well, either way, just in case. Uh, to remind people. Uh, <laughs> is this the same time? Hold on. Yeah, this, this got slotted in a year too late. My bad. So a year prior, 
to what I just read, Mortis Legion Command Leadership on Kaldari Prime announced today that they plan to withdraw forces from the Kaldari homeworld over the next 12 months. The new spark concern as to the future of security situation as the disputed plan on the Kaldari State and Galente Federation. The process of renegotiating Kaldari Prime planetary security contract has been notably marked by Brigadier General. I think we have talked about this because, yeah, basically, as Mordu became more interested in Upwell, they were no longer as interested in dealing with, um, with uh, the the um Caldari prime situation right um and it's also like and then now that the intaki thing is over a year later when it, just as they're wrapping up their departure from Caldari prime um they are also leaving intaki so they really are focusing on upwell and other things predominantly which tracks with the message that we got from Esri Hokazotsu, which uh, her hacker friend or whoever it was, her contact that suggested that, or no, I think she's the one that says that Moria Mordu has other things on his mind than Intaki nowadays. So, um, where were we? Let's see. Is there anything here? Just trying to check. Okay. So, oh, PK and Interstellar bid for security and shipping franchise and Intaki system described as bizarre and insulting by Intaki Assembly. PK has a member corporation of Lydai, by the way. Strategically transfer a piece of equipment to an alternative location. Oh, asset recovery acquiring by force. Forced, share forced sharing. Yes. Okay. Mortis Legion Command Leadership. This is the one we just did. Do we skip a whole year now? I guess we skip a whole year now. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, the pre the election happens, other things happen, and then invasions begins to uh, kick up also. Um, and there's also protest. This is the protests in Kaldari, I think, some of it. Um, Mortis Legion. Ah, uh, here we go. So what, I what has Mordu been up to, right? He just kind of... No, Mordu has now... Uh, given up their contract for both um, uh, both their previous responsibilities, Intaki and Kaldari Prime. And uh, a year later, we see our first inklings as to what he might be up to otherwise. Mortis Legion Command denies Galnet claims of rogue war clones operating in Raravos and Sekenta to acquire ancient star technology. So... Rogue War Clones. When we think of Rogue War Clones, we probably think of uh, uh, um, Arkhambine, right? And I think that's it for this one. Let's see. Wait. Hold on. God damn it. I thought I got all my stuff ducks in a row. Did I? Wait, hold on. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. Okay, so this is before. Right, okay, I'm sorry. So this is before that this is before the election. I don't know why some of this is out of order. I apologize. But, um, so, during the election, um, it gets, uh, attacked by terrorists, and so Jake, Jackus Rodin, the Rodin, the President Rodin had to, 
like call off the election and do this huge investigation and assure everybody about a good uh, transition of power and then re do, does the election and then eventually Salisagar gets elected. But, you know, that's what's going on at this time. Um, but Mortis Legion planning space combat exercises across low-sec regions as concerns grow uh, uh, over maintaining military capabilities against the Triglavians. Uh, but that's about it. Okay, great. Also, PKN Interstellar commissions Quave to research entertainment, refresh potential of subcranial nanocontrollers meshing with soft drink delivery systems. Do, do, do. Look into my, uh, my when I go into the presidential election. I have a video about that too. So then uh, we get the, the celebration with the rogue war clones. And then Mordu really doesn't get heard from again until invasion comes closer to an end. Despite an apparently lasting halt in major invasion operations by the Triglavian Collective, Edencom officials remain deeply concerned by this situation across the cluster and all forces remain on high alert. Edencom units have taken the initiative by carrying out monitoring and evacuation operations in the 27 systems under Triglavian occupation, often supported by loyal capsuleers. Fleets operated by capsuleers have substantially contributed to evacuations in systems as far apart as Vale and Skarkon. Triglavian resistance to these efforts remains high, and they continue to build up formidable defenses in the 27 occupied systems. Concord and governments across New Eden are urging the evacuation of citizens from those systems now under Triglavian control, even as New Eden's Stargate network struggles to maintain reliable service. It is now clear that for the past few weeks, the Gate network has been suffering intermittent but visible power fluctuations. While Concord and Edencom had not commented directly for many days, the increasing frequency of the fluctuations moved the Secure Commerce Commission to confirm that it is investigating the situation as a matter of urgency. The precise cause and mechanism of the fluctuations has not yet been determined. However, scientists in public institutions across New Eden agree that the tremendous changes to stars in Triglavian held systems are very likely the root cause of these gate anomalies. Uh, you know, you can still mine in Vale. The ore's better, too. If we assume the frequency continues to rise at the same rate and extrapolate forwards, it seems inevitable that the fluctuations will begin to severely affect the stability of the gate connections. If the phenomenon does not stop soon, it's likely that the Stargate network of New Eden will experience a major, perhaps catastrophic event in three to four days' time. While the functions of stargates, jump drives and so forth are well understood in theory and practice, it should be remembered that there are many open questions as to the fundamentals of space-time mechanics and dimensional interconnections. Triglavian FTL conduit technology operates in a manner which is clearly related to stable wormhole formation and transit, but it is sufficiently different that we do not fully understand it yet. Naturally. Many theories do exist on the subject, but none are comprehensive enough to fully explain the different realms of space which arise from extreme space-time topologies, There's phenomena such as dead space pockets and abyssal dead spaces. What we are seeing across the gate network is a novel. Once again, we go back and we see it says, Garissus and Serpentis agree strategy uh, for search and rescue operations with Mortis Legion and Itaki Space Police. So that's pretty interesting in my opinion. Um, because that's, so Itaki Space Police, that's that's Syndicate, right? I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, so, I found this interesting because this is a much earlier, like, well, it's Garissus and Serpentis working with Mordu. The Abyssal Dead Spaces. What we are seeing across the gate network is a novel phenomenon, but we know from the Selene incident... Wait, I think, is Intaki Space Police just Intaki system? That might be true too. I thought that that's what Morty was for. Somebody would correct me. Caroline Star, metaliminal storms and archaeological evidence of ancient catastrophes, it is possible for powerful effects to cascade through gate networks or cause wide-scale wormhole instability. Ultimately, 
In order to protect the wider network, we may be forced to disconnect the gates leading to Triglavian held systems. Despite the looming threat of a Stargate crisis, Edencom's Provost Marshal Cassia Valkanir has emphasized that the threat from Triglavian forces remains high. Marshal Valkanir has commended Capsuleer's loyalty to Edencom for their efforts across almost 200 star systems invaded by the Triglavians. Orders have been issued to monitor Triglavian operations in occupied systems, disrupting them where possible. Even so, the main effort for Edencom and Empire regulars at this time is focused on evacuating civilians out of occupied systems. This monumental task has been carried out with significant success in low population systems, and particularly those where Triglavian world arcs have been repelled. However, fears continue to grow over the fate of those on the most heavily populated occupied worlds. This is Alton Havery reporting for The Scope. Okay. We already read those. Next. Uh, December 11th, uh, 2020, YC22. Uh, 122, rather. Uh, we see... Cheetah launches Yule spaceship contest, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is where there's, um, there was almost a suicide bombing that was prevented at the mining colony at Gita 4-4. Um, and I think it's down here, yeah. Intaki Space Police in new talks with this. Oh, yeah, I guess. Okay, so Intaki Space Police is Intaki system. I'm dumb. Uh, Intaki Space Police in new talks with Intaki Assembly as Mortis Legion symbol signals intention to resume pause withdrawal from Intaki system. Um, and that's it for that one. And then we have Luminaire Essence, former Arcurio mayor and runner up in the YC-117 Galente presidential elections, Shalene Ramnev, a name that we see quite a bit during the uh, latest Intaki crisis, appeared today at a press conference in the Huramont to announce her candidacy in the year, this year's election and address the future of Caldari Prime as a major plank in her campaign. Quote, I can confirm that I am a candidate for the president of the Galente Federation, announced Ramnev. Standing here in Haramont and after my visit to dear Arcurio, I can I see clearly that this great federation remains strong in its diversity, tolerance, and resilience. The healing of this vital world has been nothing short of miraculous. And I am proud to seek the highest office in a po uh, polity that can achieve this. Now, though, it is time that the destiny of Kaldari Prime is put into the hands of those who call it home. Chemni Ramnev continued. Morda's Legion involvement after Operation Highlander was a risky but necessary choice, which in the end played out well. Morda's Legion command lived up to his reputation, and I, as a citizen of this planet, am very grateful to them. But after the long years of recovery, I say that we... The people of Kaldari Prime should not be seen as a problem to solve, but as a valuable community that will contribute to the Federation and interstellar prosperity. We should also not allow our relationship to our Kaldari neighbors fester for lack of attention to, to a shared pain that requires a shared solution. Ramnev has issued a campaign documenting deta a document detailing lo long-term solution to the vacuum that will be left in the impending departure of Mortis Legion, already reduced during the period of, con of their contract's extension. She is proposing a planetary oversight body with officials elected by all permanent Kaldari Prime citizens. Such planetary in institutions, she says, would oversee matters of global security and act as a neutral, neutral regulator of the legal and business interactions between Kaldari and Galente settlements, leaving full autonomy over internal matters to regional authorities. Quote, I have seen communities everywhere on our scarred home, continued Ramnev. They are different. They are unique. They hold different things. But they also seek the same thing that every community does. Peace, prosperity, happiness. These are things that no one can reach if anyone or if everyone seeks them only for themselves. Now is the time to search for them together. Our Federation is never at its best when it directs the many people of our union. Rather, it reaches its heights when it aids the people, 
in their quest for liberty and self-determination of their home communities. Providing the aid that is needed without demands for political conformity shall be my guiding principle as president of the Galente Federation. The scope political anal analyst Reynard Colston agreed that Ramnev's, Ramnev's pitch is, quote, a clever message that may well appeal to communities across the Federation, such as the Intaki home world and Yinmei Autonomous, without seeming false or artificial given her history and direct anchoring with Kaldari Prime situation. Once again, Shalim Ramnev shows why she should be considered as a strong contender in this election. Ooh. Um, did I say she? Did I not say she? Whoops. Uh, what do we got? Anything else? I don't think so. And that leads us to what I have called the modern day. Okay? We're almost done, guys. Angel Cartel hijack mining research ship in raid in ore testing station. Um, in the headlines, we see... Where is it? Don't make me control F. Okay, fine. I'll do it. There it is. I guess. Oh, never mind. It is in the thing. Right. Because Or is with Mordu. Right. So remember, Or is a member corporation. So we'll just read it. Uh, actually, uh, should I just read this section? Let's just see. Um, Though clearly shocked and stunned by these events, Or representatives have assured all partners that the organization has moved swiftly to secure the remaining facilities with the assistance of Upwell Consortium's Department of Friendship and Mutual Assistance, together with Mordu Legion Space Security Forces. Director Lars and Ramon emphasized that the Upwell Security Organization and Mordu's Legion would remain on high alert for as long as needed to resolve the situation and defend the interests of our member organization. So yeah, it's kind of a nothing for them. Uh... This is long after they, this is actually way, we, they crashed the, t the Titan in like last episode. Um, so then <clears throat> 2003, so we're now in 2003, um, March 17th, 2003. Is it in the headlines? Come on. Here we go. Intaki Assembly hires an Algentical PMC to hunt an Ibra assassination cell after rebuffing Mortis Legion. So now Intaki Assembly is wanting to work with Mortis Legion, even though Mortis Legion offered, it would seem that offered help, um, which is kind of weird. I mean, it just shows how far they've, they've soured, right? Yeah, that's it. And then comes, actually, before that, let me do one more. Hold on. We've been talking about Intaki, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't complete the Intaki arc without, oops. Y'all ain't tired of this video, and I know it. Point twenty-three. The region is still coming to terms with the catastrophe in the system of Turner, with devastation on a staggering scale. Initial estimates of fatalities are reported to be in the millions with complete loss of life on Turner Evidence 1. points to the catastrophic failure of the Amar-built stellar transmuter, sparking condemnation across New Eden. Further increase in tensions between the Mimitar Republic and the Mar Empire are now at breaking point, witnessed by a sharp escalation of skirmishes. Diplomatic negotiations between both sides have all but collapsed.
broadcasting live with shocking scenes of Federation ships invading Intaki and neighboring systems. This is a major developing situation amidst the current turmoil in New Eden. My fellow citizens, the time has come for the Federation to rise and liberate Intaki to recover what is ours. These worlds and the people of the Kaldari State are being slaughtered in this outrageous invasion. We stand ready to confront any aggression against the state, and the combined military of the Min Mitar Republic will repay our enemies in kind for this mass murder, for it is the sacred obligation of every subject of Holy Amar to reclaim the stars and rise up for your empire. Okay, so uh, the empires basically descend into war, um, which is great for everyone involved. Um, but we don't actually hear very much from Mordu during this time, okay? Um, but we do hear from Deathless and other things like that, which of course leads to... Zarzak has been waiting. An ancient nexus long abandoned. Now ruled by the insurgents, the fearless, the deathless. Trust is rare among our kind. Yet here you are, compelled by my invitation. I offer you a haven, a fortress, hidden from the Empire. I have given it life. It feeds on me. And in return, it yields knowledge, gifts, power. Prepare your forces for chaos on the front lines. Harness the might of capsuleers with the promise of riches. And together, we will unlock Zarzak's secrets. One by one. So we know that um, Mordu has worked with the uh, with uh, Arkhambine quite a bit. That we know that they were working with war clones quite a bit. We could have actually gone through and hunted for other examples of war clones being used, and probably found other fingerprints of Mordu in these in this time period. But um, the key here is is that like. Yeah. Morty's connection with Arkhambine is really critical to what's about to happen. So, then... Wait, actually, hold on. I think I missed one. Which is kind of cool, because it's now recent enough that I don't even have to, like, go hunt for it way back. Right? It's, uh... Um... Is it this one? Oh yeah, I guess it is that. Never mind. We'll get there. Or did we? Yeah. I've confused myself. But it's okay. I'm here now. And we're good. Mordu's Legion Task. A Mordu's Legion Task. Actually, hold on. Shoot, there was one more thing. Hold on, hold on. Before this, there's a there's this whole thing. Is it here?
Underworld rumors of our combined war clone organization breaking with Aura and Mortis Legion spreads on Galnet conspiracy uh, group nets. Why didn't that one get pulled up? Oh, I also missed this one. From Caldari Union Day. We have... Nothing? <laughs> More do? No? Okay, great. Waste of my time. All right. There was one about... Yeah, Mortis Legion increases recruitment efforts uh, as demand for security and military contract services increases due to insurgencies. And... This is the same one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the same one. Darn it. All right, so then Nolhasek Heist, and then I guess the next one's Bowhead Ambush. I thought there was a message in between the two where we got confirmation that they were doing it, but maybe it's this. A Mordu's Legion task force sent to reinforce corporate security troops on the besieged planet of Hevris III was ambushed by Garista's pirates last night. The task force included heavily modified Mordu's bowheads that are reported to have been outfitted to support Legion war clone unit operations. The ships carried war clone blanks, cloning bays, and materiel for ground warfare. The advanced Legion equipment is speculated to be of high value for the rumored deathless research and development efforts into cloning. Taken by surprise and overwhelmed by superior Garista's forces, the task force escorts were quickly wiped out, leaving the freighters defenseless. While the majority of the Legion fleet was destroyed in high orbit of the planet, a handful of bowhead freighters rushed towards the planet in a desperate attempt to deploy the Mordu's troops to the surface before their destruction. Only one ship managed to reach low orbit, but heavily damaged and under limited control, the bowhead crashed down on a remote part of the planet. The crash site is likely to become a priority target for pirate forces. Reports are circulating that the Deathless Circle is deploying units of experimental clone troops, designated as Vanguard, to the planet. With the decision to send lightly defended freighters into a pirate insurgency zone, Highlighting how overstretched Mordu's Legion and Upwell are, the surviving Legion troops on the surface of Hevris III are preparing for the first strike by the Deathless and his vanguard troops. This is Alton Hoffery reporting for The Scope. All right, and we see Mordu's Legion uh, releases <coughs> uh, state bowhead troop transport responding to pirate attacks on he Hevris III colonial settlements. Archimine War Clone Mercenary Group formerly reclassified as Deathless Circle member with DED and Sorrow War Red Warrants issued. So remember, like, Archimine and Mortis Legion has worked hand in hand since way back in the day to to think that, like, Mordu was probably involved in the proto days of Archimine, um, uh, including uh, with Life Giver, and likely was one of the people, like, was related to how Archimine became Archimine. Um, and now here they are betraying everybody and joining the Deathless Circle, um, which, like, Concord was already, uh, not Concord, but uh, Upwell has now taken on the duty of fighting against these insurgencies. Mordu has been, uh, you know, mobilized for it. Uh, they are vastly overstretched in their capabilities, like, they're being overwhelmed. Uh, if only Eden Combo would respond. No. Uh, but now this happens so this is why i think that a lot of this uh, these other t things that are happening with uh upwell and with mortis legion have been happening when it comes to their technological leaps right because like this happened last december uh and these invasions or the insurgencies have been going on since last october so um like they are going to have to figure out an answer to the problem. And so they're going to be working on it pretty hard to do so. So we get things like the, um, the sky hook and, um, you know, 
other things like that. So, and then I think at least I think that leads us back to today's. Is that right? Hold on, there might be one more. Oh yeah, this is the Kemal Tech convoy. Oh wait, hold on, let's keep going. Evermore accuses NES. Is there anything here? Probably. Ah, oh, there it is. CDIA actively seeking information on Arkham by figure identified as Life Giver following the reappearance of his alias, known to DED since YC114 in Deathless Affiliate Communications. And uh, major investments from an undisclosed organization has been independently reported by Ostracron Agency. We didn't talk about them very much, but that's a Deathless proxy. Um... And then... Camaltech has suffered the humiliating loss of one of their convoys. Destined for the Intaki Bank Depository in the TXWTAC-EI system, the convoy security was critically undermined by a prior intelligence leak that exposed its cargo and itinerary. The decision to carry on with an unchanged plan regardless of this leak has now come under heavy scrutiny. From the moment it embarked from the Chemaltech research station in the Orcelard system, the convoy was followed by hundreds of capsuleer ships. Centered around the Ocator class transport ship Daphne, tasked with ferrying vital equipment and science personnel, the convoy also consisted of a small contingent of escort ships. Potentially overestimating their defensive capabilities or misinterpreting the intentions of the surrounding capsuleer ships, the convoy started its voyage. The uneventful passage through the initial systems might have bolstered their confidence, but as soon as the convoy left the relative safety of Empire Space and jumped into low sec, the convoy came under attack. Chased through low sec by vastly superior forces, the convoy desperately broadcast pleas for support. Needless to say, the convoy's desperate calls for help did not result in their salvation, and within minutes, the outnumbered and outgunned Chemaltech ships were destroyed one by one. Surviving Chemaltech geneticists captured by members of the Fraternity Alliance have been threatened with execution if demands made by Fraternity are not met. Following this statement, Chemaltech has announced the reward of 1 billion ISK for the safe return of each geneticist emphasizing their commitment to the welfare and safety of their staff. In recent days, Chemaltech has been plagued by a series of data leaks, including sensitive information recovered from the wrecks of the destroyed convoy. These data fragments have been pieced together by capsuleers, revealing ties to a secretive cloning project run by the Upwell Consortium, of which both Chemaltech and the Intaki Bank are members. The specifics of this cloning initiative remain unclear with Upwell Consortium maintaining silence on the subject. However, the recovered data suggests the project is a feasibility study for a cloning operation of considerable scale. The intended purpose of these clones is the subject of wide speculation. Some observers suggest they might be being developed as a counter to the recent deployment of Vanguard clones by the Deathless, while others speculate that they could form a new workforce or even represent a breakthrough in capsular cloning technology. As this story unfolds, the Scope promises to deliver ongoing coverage of these developments. This is Alton Havery reporting for The Scope. So this is all pretty recent stuff, so you can go watch my videos with the deep dive on it. Um, but what we're, you know, we're just realized that like Mordu is part of Upwell, so this is all tied in together. But we also have GRNJ TAC-3 and Taki Space Police Station break in targeted prototype drop suits developed in partnership with Mordu's Legion. So they are directly connected. Um, and it looks like, so in Taki Space Police or Mordu is developing the suits and Kemaltech is in, uh, developing the clones, etc. And then, is there anything else? Yes, that leads to today where, um, well, actually I will say that like the scientists uh, did get returned for a billion isk and then of course the one or two got sent to the deathless side but I think that just about covers it for the history of uh, the, where we're at with Mordu we're going to have to wait and see 
uh, where this is going next. But I hope that through this um, kind of look back in the past, especially yesterday, kind of piecing together the threads to allow us to understand what's going on a little bit better and realize that, like, you know, some of these relationships go deep. Some of these things have kind of happened before. And one of the things that got me th that I got thinking about while doing all of this is I'm starting to question the honor of Mordu's Legion. And, you know, Mordu is getting ex is eccentric and, you know, unpredictable and all that stuff. But like between the Sisters of Eve convoy, the uh the ore convoys that was uh Back in the day, uh, you know, they didn't end their contract. They just didn't show up and bad things happened, right? And then with like Intaki and Kaldari Prime, it's like shit happens and right as they're pulling out. And it's not like it, the, sh the shit led to them pulling out, but like it seems really odd that they don't seem to end their contracts on a high note, you know? They, they are one of the most effective military organizations or mercenary organizations in the cluster. And yet, most of their former contracts ended in um, under conditions that aren't necessarily great. So it makes me wonder what's going, where we're going with all of this. Mordu is, uh, you know, has his own motivations. He may feel like he's playing 40 chess. He probably does. Uh, and I don't know where that necessarily leads us. It's only happened twice since November. What? Uh, oh, yeah. The corruption. Um, no. Wait. I think they... Didn't they prevent... Yeah, they prevented uh, the cutoff between Amara and uh, Kaldari right now. Like, they succeeded. The... the um... Oh! Actually, that's a good point. If you guys, uh, I did want to point out something before we wrap things up. Actually, well, I'll say that I'll, I'll wrap this part up first. But that about covers it for the Mordu. I really would like to uh, to ask you guys, do you guys agree with my suspicions about Mordu? How do you guys feel about Mordus Legion? Um, did you learn anything? Did I miss anything? And uh, please make sure to go back and watch the other one because that's the bulk of the information. Uh, but if you're watching this live, go ahead and hang out. But otherwise... I've been Ashtarothi. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for checking it out and all of the supporters. But I've been Ashtarothi. The... <laughs> but I've been playing this game since 2000. I'm... Well, God damn it. All right. I'm burned out. All right. So I am Ashtarothi. I've been playing this game since 2010. Talking about it since 2012. And I'm here to put play it, put, 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 put even the context for you, my fellow Imperians. Thank you guys for coming. This is what happens when I read nonstop for five hours over the course of two days to you guys. I made it, though. We made it. We made it. Thank you guys for coming. Until next time, I'll see you in space. Stay here. Stay here. How's it going, guys? I'm going to... Uh, we can talk for a couple more minutes. And I'm probably... I am going to probably be taken off soon because... Woo! I knew that going into Mortis Legion was going to be a big effort, but... Woo! Oh, yeah. So, those of you who are here because you're live... You're here. Only 14 years. <laughs> what a youngster. Thanks, Antonia. Uh, so, if you are like me and you were at the latest insurgency, this is a PSA, if you were at the latest insurgency and, like, you didn't want to go, you didn't want to dock up in a station and you didn't want to leave it in the uh, fob or the yeah, the fob to get blown up and, and asset safety. Uh, this structure, this free port right here, was here. If you put your stuff in here, I got a warning this morning. Your structures are at risk. So, within 48 hours of this morning... This structure is going to go abandoned. When that happens, there will be no asset safety. Whatever gets blown, when this thing blows up, and it'll also be, a, a, you'll be able to blow it up in one swoop. 
when that happens, um, everything that's inside of this structure will drop in cans. Everything will drop in cans. So if you have stuff in here, it will go away and be somebody else's. However, if you don't, it might be worth keeping an eye on this structure because it might be abandoned and blown up in two days. Oh, shit. Can't see this. Yeah, this structure. It's an Athenor. It's low powered. It's called Freeport T2 Fumble Miner Co. And it went abandoned yesterday. Or it went uh, close to abandoned yesterday. So I don't actually know if this was planted before the invasion or the insurgency or if it was planted during the insurgency in order to, you know, honeypot or whatever. I don't know if they're going to fill it with fuel. But just know, like, I just docked up in it. But if anybody was stashing their stuff here, it's about to become abandoned. In, uh, Oymen. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything going on this weekend that's worth uh, talking about? When is the frigate free-for-all? April 20th. So in eight days. So not this weekend, but next weekend is the frigate free for all. Is there anything going on this weekend? I don't know. Take a break. All right, guys. I have been Ashrothy, and uh, I think I'm going to take off, guys. Uh, just go ahead and head on over to the Discord if you need to. Anger Games is this weekend. That's true. The Anger Games continues. Thank you for dropping by, Setonia. Um... I don't think I have any questions for you right now. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, guys. I've been Ashrathi, the voice of New Eden. And until next time, I'll see you in space. Bye, merch. Oh, God, this needs to work. Look, man, today is not a good uh, example of, of my stuff. I, I, we'll, we'll be back on point next week. Bye. <laughs>